Let's, let's turn up for the books. Right then, hello, who's this? Come on, guys. Let's hit for the action. Strange person. The significance of the BMX Pro Spectacular Super Circuit Series has grown city to city. It all started in Miami, Florida, then to Detroit, Michigan, to St. Louis, Missouri, to Johnstown, Pennsylvania, to Las Vegas, Nevada, to Los Angeles, California. Across the nation, this Grand Prix of BMX has been a series full of winners and losers. A series where the leader has changed six times in six races. A drama that has left a class of contenders you can count on one hand, still with a shot to prove who's the number one BMX rider in the nation. Our current leader, Greg Hill. But Turbo Harry Leary, the veteran and teammate of Eddie King the Rookie, are tied for second right behind. Eric Root, Mr. Surprise, along with the only racer to win two stops on the circuit, Brian Patterson, are tied for third and still within striking range to win it all. It will all be decided here today as Roker Ventures, in association with the Kids Network, presents the BMX Pro Spectacular Super Circuit Finals. Steve, this is one of the most exciting tracks we've seen the whole year long on this Super Circuit. And get a load of this prize money. Over $15,000 will be given away today, $7,500 to the first place finisher. We also will decide the overall winner for the 1983 Pro Spectacular Series. And the winner today, the overall winner, drives away in a brand new 1983 Mustang GL. And one of the guys that could drive away with this thing today, Dean, it could be in our very first moto. So let's take a look at our first semi that's up. Our first pro semi that's up is our A Pro Semi Moto number one. We've got six racers in this semi, and they, these who they are Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Brian Patterson, Harry Larry, Turnell Henry, and Clint Miller. A lot of heavyweights that have been standouts all year long along the tour. We have six racers in this semi moto. We've got six A Pro racers in a second semi moto. We will narrow down these 12 racers to a field of eight for our main event, and the winner of that, Dean, walks away with a check for $7,500. These racers are up on their pedals. The gate is up. Dean, your thoughts? Well, I'll tell you what, we've got to put two and three in this race. It's being incredibly exciting. Moto 2, round 1, and here are the top six racers that made it into the semis. Tommy Brackage is in this moto, along with Stu Thompson on the verge of a comeback. Pete Longkarevich, who's been wild and raging all year long. Rod Beckering also in it. Eric Groove, a top contender. And Greg Grubbs, a guy that will not say die throughout the year. The racers are up on their pedals. Brackens, Thompson, Lonkarevich, Beckering, Roop, and Grubbs. Dean, any favorites? Yeah, keep an eye on Lonkarevich on the inside. He's been extremely fast out of the gate today. Also, Grubbs has been doing very, very well out of the gate. If this photo is anything like our first pro semi, things are going to get real even by the end. The track is wide. There's plenty of room to pass. We have some trouble down there. Looks like Stomp and Stu Thompson have a little bit of trouble. We'll get back to our leaders. They come around the outside track, coming into this first turn, setting up for the water jump. And Tommy Brackens, who's feared that water jump off practice long, makes a clean shot as he continues to be in the hole shot. Here comes a move, though. Number three making a move on the inside, Greg Grubbs. Greg Grubbs has had a good year so far this year. He's in the lead right now, followed by Brackens. Dean, is fatigue going to be a factor here? Yes, yes, it definitely is going to be a big, big factor here. Here comes Brackens coming down this back straight on well, the second lap of these pro races. They go on the inside of the course. That's Greg Grubbs is in first now. He got just picked up that lead on the back straight. And it looks like Eric Roof making a move. Eric Roof making a move for second. It is going to be 
Greg Grubbs in first place and Eric Rube coming in second place, followed by Tommy Brackett who have the whole shot. These guys again will run a second time, each pro semi running twice. As we mentioned earlier, this is possibly the most demanding track that we've seen thus far on the tour. We understand that D. David had a chance to look at the track earlier today. Let's have a look. The last jump on the first lap is a real interesting one. It's about 12 feet long and about 12 feet wide. But it also happens to be about 4 feet deep. And most of these BMX pros really don't like to get wet. But for those who manage to clear this incredibly deep and wide water jump, they got another obstacle ahead of them. They have to go over the whole track one more time again. These guys are earning their money. I like the water hole. It's going to be crazy going in there like, you know, one behind the other or right side by side. It's going to be exciting. <laughs> it's got really good speed. You can keep your speed up around the whole track. There's some good jumps on it. Yeah, it's going to be some really good racing today. It's excellent. The track's excellent. It's nice and long. Got some good jumps. The dirt's excellent for diving and some turns. We're going to see a lot of action this weekend. There's a lot of jumps, and that means a lot of air. And especially when we're going two laps, I think, I think the winner is going to be the best guy in condition because he can pass on track that's so wide. The track is, is fantastic. I consider this thing a, a piece of art, and your legs are going to feel like they're going to fall off your body after you finish this thing, I think. Yeah, it's great. It's gnarly. It's real long. It's got a lot of jumps. It's got, you know, really good berms and uh, a lot of cute bushes around it and stuff, and uh, it's really bitching. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> We told you that was some track. <laughs> it seems like one thing's for sure. All of the racers really enjoy this track. It's a fair track, again, because it's so wide. We can see in the first two semis already, the racers are bunching up. The track's wide, it's long, things are really evening out. Very fair track. Let's take a quick look, Dean, at our first breakdown for this final stop on the Pro Spectacular Circuit. You can see here, first place, $7,500. We'll be talking about cash standings later on, but anybody that wins first place today, Dean, is going to win more money in one race than they've won all year long. We can see our total prize money, $15,000 for this stop. And I would venture to say that that's the biggest pro purse ever in the history of BMX. $15,000 in cash being handed out today. So we're going to have all of these racers competing for this prize money as we get into round two of our pro semis. Our second moto is up. This is semi moto one, round two. This is actually our third semi. These guys have already been around the track and one of the best semis I've seen in a long time. Again, here they are. Six racers, Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Brian Patterson, Harry Larry, Turnell Henry, and Clint Miller. Greg Hill, Brian Patterson, and Harry Larry, all contenders for the overall number one. And it's all gonna come down right here in Los Angeles for the final stop. The gate is up, the track is down, and our last race, Scott Clark blasted through the storm and came from behind to win it all. To go into our first turn, Scott Clark's the only thick of it, but number one, Brian Patterson. Nope, that's Clint Miller out in front. We have two number ones in this photo, you're absolutely right, Dean, that's Clint Miller. And Clint setting up for the water jump. Here they come. Clint Miller going over, followed by Scott Clark and Greg Hill in third, Harry Larry in fourth. Ryan Patterson broke his wrist earlier today in practice. It's a factor right now. He's in fifth spot. The pros on their second lap going inside the guts of this incredible track. It's got five-foot berms, a 12-foot wide water jump, and straightaways that'll tire anybody out. Here comes Clint Miller, still in the hole shot, building the lead over Scott Clark. In third spot, Greg Hill, followed by Harry Larry. These guys want to finish in the top four. The top four will continue and go into the main event. So our finish for this semi, not much of a contest, as Clint Miller skates away with it, followed by Greg Hill, Harry Larry, and um, Clint Miller. Then we have Brian Patterson coming in fifth again with a broken wrist. We're going to go into our second semi right now. Second semi, Moto 2, round 2, here they are. Tommy Bracken, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarevich, Rod Becker, and Eric Rubin, Greg Grubbs. Eric Rubin, another contender, would love to make it through into the main event with a chance to win the overall title. Dean, do you have any favorites for this? Keep an eye on Longkarevich. He had a great start that last moto, and he ran into a little bit of a problem. He slipped a couple pedals on the uh, second turn, so I still think he could easily take this race. Greg Grubbs has been a scrappy competitor all year long. He has made an excellent showing through many of the races. He had a third at the first up in Miami. He made it to the main event in Pittsburgh, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles. He won the last funnel. Let's see how he does. Coming out of the hole, shot a very long straightaway. Number seven, Stu Thompson. Had trouble that first time around. Would like to make it up. But we also have Eric Rube with a number number one plate coming around that back straight. Rube in the lead. Stu Thompson behind. Thompson had him crash that last photo. He's going to have to do good on this one in order to get to the main. Over the water jump. Rube clears it. Followed by Thompson. And these guys are doing great. Yeah, they sure are. Unfortunately, back at that water, Joby and Tommy Brackens go down. He's down pretty hard. 
All right, Roof still working on his lead here. Eric, another top contender in the top five with a chance to win it all. Would like to hang on to this lead. You can see the fatigue already setting in as we go into this second lap. Right, Ron Karamis, number 73, in spur, third spot. And then number four and number three, Greg Grubbs. These are our top four riders. <laughs> it looks like this is going to be the final order for these guys to come across. Steve Thompson, for extra good measure, pushes past Roop. Roop really didn't care about it because he had a chance to go to the main event. Dean, can you recap that moto? Yeah, it was a very good race by Stewart. He just inched by uh, right at the finish line. He's a very smart racer. He's obviously saving his uh, power to exactly when he needs it. We talked about the point, uh, the, the prize in the first before. Let's take a look at the cash standing so far. Six stops through this 83 season. Hey, it's not over yet. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Dean, this is what we've been waiting for all year long. The final pro main, three rounds of handlebar to handlebar racing to determine the number one overall winner for the Pro Spectacular 1983 season. These are the top eight racers as we look at round one. These guys have fought through the quarters, through the semis. Here they are in the pro main, $15,000 at stake. Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Harry Leary, Clint Miller, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarovic, Eric Roop, and Greg Grubbs. Three of these racers in contention for the overall number one. The other five in contention for $7,500 worth of prize money to walk away. The Braiders are up on their pedals. The gate is ready to go. And we are having our underway for our first A Pro main event. Twice around the track. They go three times, three rounds. That's a total of six laps. We're underway. $7,500 at stake. Let's take them coming down the straightaway. Looking for the hole shot. Stu Thompson, number seven, taking the hole shot, working his way through the first berm. I don't know how much training Stu's been doing, but he's in the lead right now, coming down that back straight. And number three is right behind him, Greg Grubbs. We've got two number threes in this photo. Greg Grubbs and Greg Hill, but Stu Thompson leading the way right now. Stu, on the back of his pants, it says next year. But he's showing he still may be of some importance, quite a bit of importance this year. Well, Hill has got to be just riding smart today. He's just back in fourth place right now. He's conserving his energy. I really think this is part of his plan. He's going to let these other guys run away and just wear themselves out. We're going to be talking about the point standings and where Greg Hill sits in front of the pack. But right now, Stu Thompson is going for that $7,500. We've got Greg Grubbs in second. Inside, Eric Roop making a move. Eric Roop is going to have to make a move in order to be in contention with the overall. And here comes Roop, second place. Eric Roop saving it to the end to make a spectacular move. Eric Roop making a move. Coming by there and finishing up in second place, edging out Greg Grubbs and Stu Thompson winning that first photo. Each pro main, they go around three times. Then we can take a look at that last race. Look at this finish, Dean. Here comes Stu Thompson. He's pumping. He's cranking. He wants that pro money. Behind him, Greg Grubbs, number three. They're come going around that track. This is down that back straightaway, up over the step jump. Dean, let's talk about fatigue as these guys have to go two more times, two laps each. Right, okay, now Stewart is riding smart here. He's a very, very strong rider, so he has plenty of power to, to finish strong. He's just keeping uh, keeping his guard up, making sure nobody comes on the inside of him in this final corner. And you can see Root making that move in that final corner, just edges past Grubbs. Very good move, but... Again, Grubbs is uh, still in contention. He got that third place finish. And, uh, or, or, excuse me. All right, Rube playing smart. We had a chance to talk to all of the contenders for the overall number one spot. Let's take a listen and see what this series means to them. You know, I'm still not that far behind. I'm like 70 points behind the leader, which, you know, anything could happen at, you know, at this race and on this track. Your nerves are really, really racking your ride right about now because there's a lot of pressure on, you know. I, I'm in contention to win it. Uh, I just got to keep my head straight. I've worked hard this year, and it'd be really nice to go home and win this race. And I know Greg Hill has a big lead, um, but there's always a chance. And I feel I've, I've trained my brains out for the last month, and, and I really want to win this one bad. And it's going to be an important race to win because it's a big purse, you know, and there's a lot of prizes, but I'm not really worried about that. I'm just thinking about the race. I'm going to, you know, come out and do the job that I know best how to do, you know. The five contenders that we just saw speaking all had a chance for the most prestigious title possibly in the history of BMX. Two of the contenders that we just saw, Brian Patterson and Eddie King, not in the main event. And one of them got bumped out in the semis. One got bumped out in the quarterfinals. Dean, what kind of disappointment are they looking at? Well, as you mentioned, in our top three, we had some big, big disappointments. Harry Leary finished eighth. He was lucky enough to make it to the main. What we have is Eddie King, who didn't even make it to the main. Brian Patterson also out of the main. So two out of our top three. It's a pretty big disappointment. Brian Patterson, again, breaking his wrist in practice earlier today. And Eddie King, we're not really sure what happened to Eddie. We're going to try to talk to him later on and find out what happened. He was in the quarterfinals, and he didn't even make it to the semis to get to the main event. So we're going to find out about Eddie if we can. 
We'll take a look, Dean, now at our point standings. We saw our contenders and their points coming into this main event. Greg Hill still alive and kicking. 270 points. Some people thought he was out of reach. We'll have to see what happens. Harry Leary in second place with 210 points. Still within reach of Greg. We're going to look at our point breakdown. But if Harry wins, he wins 80 points. If Greg takes eight, he wins 10 points. In which case, Harry Leary would go ahead with 10 more points than Greg. That's our point breakdown once again. First place, 80 points. Second place, 70 points. Harry Larry with 210 points. Eric Rube is still alive and kicking with 200 points. He still has a shot for the overall. The best Eric can do actually is a tie with Greg. That's our point breakdown. The A Pro Main Round 2 now at the gate. Again, these guys shooting for $15,000 in total purse money. Here they are again, our main event of the A Pro. Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Harry Larry, Clint Miller, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarovich, Eric Rube, and Greg Grubbs. First time around, Stu Thompson came and won it all. Harry Larry, the guy that's in contention for the overall spot against Greg Hill, who's also in this main event. Harry Larry took a seventh. Dean, he's got to be in the number two or number one spot to even think about winning it overall. Right. Harry has no time to lose. He's got to do very, very well in this race to stay in contention. If not, he can just write it off and go home. Right. Meanwhile, Greg Hill been playing it very cool. Came in third last place. All Greg needs is a seventh or better to finish as the overall number one pro for 1983. Stu Thompson gets the whole shot again. And here comes stopping Stu on the outside lap. Again, these pros going around twice. Stu working on He's trying to get two wins in a row if he can. Behind him, Greg Hill, number three. And Pete Longkarovich, the wily one that we thought might do something. Right, watch Longkarovich. He looks real mean going down that straight. He could very well pass Hill. I'm not sure that Stewart even knows those guys are in back of the riding an extremely strong race. This is the old Stu that we used to see. It sure is. We wonder what happened to Stu Thompson this season, but he's certainly making his mark here at the very final stop in Los Angeles, California. Stu Thompson, number seven, coming around. They go on the inside of the track. This is the second and final lap of round number two. We have one final round. Stu Thompson in first. Greg Hill in second. This may sew it up for Greg to be overall number one pro. Pete Longkarovich, who we like, is now coming through and doing a good third to Harry Larry and making a last-minute move against Scott Clark to sew up fourth place. Dean, maybe we can look at that finish one more time to see the action from Harry Larry. Harry knows that he's going to have to really work on his overall finishes, and if Harry's going to do anything to give Greg Hill a chance for money, he's going to have to place up. Here comes the water jump, and we see Stuart Thompson coming around this berm, coming up, and over, heading straight from the inside of the track. This is our second and final lap over the whoop de doos Greg Hill right behind him. We're going to watch Harry Larry, though. Pete Longkarovich in third. We have Roop and Harry Larry fighting between fourth and fifth. Larry puts on a strong effort. Harry, again, trying to get through and trying to get some higher place points. We're going to talk about Olympic scoring a little bit later. But right now, we're going to talk to Eddie King, who has been an incredible contender all year long, and he is only a rookie. Eddie, you gave the pros a run for your money, but let's talk about why you didn't make it to the main event. You had, I guess, some trouble in the quarterfinals. Well, uh, the competition today has been probably the best it's been all year. There's five motos, and as you can tell now in the main events, these guys are just, they're going all out. And it's just... <laughs> It kind of makes me wonder if I should really be in there with those kind of guys because they're unreal right now. Eddie, i got to argue with you right away because I think this is only the first time since Miami that you haven't made it to the main event. Every one of the stops on the Super Circuit, you've been right in there in the thick of it. What do you think was the difference today for you? I don't know. I think maybe those guys' intensity level was a little bit more up than mine was because they're going all out. It's unreal to watch these guys. Was it the prize money? $15,000 at stake for, um, you know, for total purse and also the car at stake. For Stu Thompson, this is the prize money, but for, for, Harry, for Harry Larry and Eric Roof and those guys, it's the car. They're going all out. Eddie, you can't really feel bad. Um, where do you think your heads are right now, and how do you look for the next year and for the next season? Oh, well, I'm looking for uh, just to improve on what I've been doing this year. You know, I've learned a lot this year that I just, you know, it's hard to explain. Well, congratulations to you, guy. You had a really great season for your first time out. I think I know that you've impressed a lot of the viewers and a lot of the BMX race fans all around the country. We still have a real interesting fight for second place. Harry Larry and Eric Group going pedal to pedal around these three main events to see who can come out number two. And it looks right now that Greg Hill, who came into this race as our leader, is going to walk out of this race our number one overall pro. We'll be right back with more after this. Don't go away. Stay and see who wins the number one play. Next up, Dean, is exactly what everybody has come for. The final pro main in the 1983 Pro Spectacular Series. Again, the pro main, $15,000 purse money, and the car goes to number one overall. Our racers in this moto, once again, Scott Clark, Greg Hill, Harry Larry, Clint Miller, Stu Thompson, Pete Longkarovich, Eric Roop, and Greg Grubbs. 
Greg Hill at this point, the odds out favorite of going number one overall. He's been playing this smart all the way through. Dean, any comments? Keep an eye on the two inside positions between uh, Greg Hill and that spoiler, Pistol Pete. That's Miller in second place. So it's Hill, Miller, Leary on the outside in third, and we've got Konkarovich in fourth. Again, these pros do two laps around the track. In number one spot right now, number three, Greg Hill. The last stop on the Super Circuit was in Los Angeles. He won three out of three mains. That means finishing number one. Although in this time around, the first two rounds were won by Stu Thompson. We've got Greg Hill out on a real storm marker here. And Greg Hill would like to finish up being number overall, number one, with a nice win here. Keep an eye on Leary, Miller, and Lonkarevich. Now it looks like just Miller and Lonkarevich drop back a little bit, but keep an eye on Leary. He can very well pull the last minute pass here. These, Anything's possible. These pro mates will be going back and forth. The 15 grand is going to be up for grabs. Here comes Greg Hill and Harry Leary, followed by Clint Miller and Pete Lonkarevich. It was Stomp and Stu the first two rounds around in number place, but Greg Hill determined to show who was absolutely the number one overall pro, really putting the foot down here in this very last round of the pro main. We see Harry Larry here trying to chase him, but not able to. This title, definitely the most prestigious title ever possibly in the history of bicycle motocross, a whole year long of racing, and these top five contenders that had a shot for it all told us how they felt about what would it be to be the number one overall pro. This series will decide the number one pro, and I'd like to be it, and it, it will mean a lot to whoever wins it. <laughs> Winning it would mean that you're the best because whoever wins will be the best pro for 83. I'd like to be the number one ESPN pro. And if I can come across that finish line and, and know that I won the number one, I really don't know what I'll do. I may just fall off and cry, I don't know. You know, as far as winning the series, whoever wins it, um, it's, I would say, the best series to win because of the TV coverage. A lot of people are seeing this sport that aren't didn't know about it, you know, and it's going to help the sport a lot. So that's pre really prestigious to win it. And Greg Hill is our winner. We'll be right back with our final check presentations and car awards right after this. Ladies and gentlemen, our 1983 winner for the BMX Pro Spectacular final, Greg Hill, who put it all together and came back and won the very last moto of today's race. Greg, congratulations to you. Excellent racing all year long. Before we take a look at your last moto, I understand that your wife's in the hospital without to give birth. What was racing like today, knowing that that was about to happen? Well, fortunately, I didn't know. I knew that she was going to be home with a friend today and stuff, but I didn't know she was going to go into labor. And, you know, everybody here knew, my parents and stuff, but they didn't tell me until after the race. So, you know, it's kind of like a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> An emotional high for both of you, yeah. not only for your wife and yourself. Let's take a look, Greg, at your last race. I'd like you to take it from the starting gate. And if we can just kind of go pedal by pedal on what okay. happened, here it is. Well, off the gate, like, you know, to prepare myself for the race, I just thought championship race, you know, get out, get in the top five, and you got it made. But I found myself getting a really well start. So I just kind of like, you know, I just went for it. You know, I, I was not going to... You know, if I was going to wind up in the middle of the pack, I was just going to be safe, but I wound up being in front, so I just went all the way, you know? So the whole shot was almost an accident. Again, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, Greg Hill, number three in the lead. I just, like, didn't think about the whole shot, and I just thought about winning the series, you know? And um, turned around being that I got the whole shot and won the race, and Stu did, got back far enough to where I could win, you know? So that was really a big, you know, it didn't really hit me at the finish line. You know, I just thought, I knew I won the championship, but then when I come across the line and look back and seen Stuart back there, I thought, cool, you know, I knew I won <laughs> the race also. So it was really... Stoked, and then about six seconds later, I heard my wife went into labor, so it's just oh a really... Oh, my gosh. Greg, can you just describe the track to us here as we take a look at you flying over that step jump? What was the track like, and how did it feel to you? Well, the track, that race was probably the best race, because I hadn't led one race all day. You know, I'd just been playing it safe. And I got out there, and the track felt really smooth, and I felt good, and I wasn't getting tired, you know, and my momentum didn't slow up any. I really felt really good. You know, the track was really nice. We have a water jump taken, uh, coming up here at this one. Let's take a look at this water jump. What's that jump like to go over? Um, it's a little bit easier than it looks. It's just like, you know, you got to hit it and you got to push down because it's got a nice lip on it and you can really get a lot of air off of it, you know, so you just got to hit it and push down more like a speed jump type of deal, you know. Let's talk about the uh, Pro Spectacular as a series. What's it meant to you to win this thing? We've, um, we've heard some of your thoughts on it before, but now that you are the actual, the overall number one pro, how does it feel? Well, uh, it's kind of like undescribable. I mean, I've been pro for six years and I've never earned a number one pro plate and it's just, you know, right now, I won the race, and I'm really pumped, but tomorrow when I wake up, my brains are going to probably fall out, because that's when I realize it, you know? Well, here you are doing a fine job holding off Harry Larry as we go in over those little whoop-de-doos. Were those much trouble for you? Not really, no. I was just kind of like, I could sense that somebody was like right there, and I was really tired, but I just kind of pushed it till the end, you know? I knew at that point, if someone passed me, I'd still win the championship, but I didn't know, you know, by, I didn't know I was going to win the race also. I thought, I didn't know, have any idea where Stu was, you know, so... 
<laughs> well, there's our historic finish. You were able to hold off Stu Thompson, and we've got not only a check for $7,500, which we're going to be getting to, but also we have a brand new automobile, a new Mustang for our winner, Greg Hill. Driving the car happens to be Rennie Roker, the man responsible for the BMX Pro Spectacular well, Series. Well, 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 how about this? $7,500, oh. a brand new car, a brand new company, a team trophy, a brand new baby on the way. What else, Greg? I mean, where, I don't know, where do man. we go from here? I don't know. You know, I must say this to you in all sincerity. When we started this, I remember calling you on the phone and saying, Greg, what do you think if we tried to get a world champion professional rider? And you said, you know, we need that because it's never been done. Yeah. I remember pulling the other pros. And I also remember the magazines calling me saying, I just got a call from Greg Hill saying, there's a great idea going around. We ought to get behind it. Yeah. It all started with that phone conversation. Yeah, I was really pumped about it, you know, because it hasn't been that way. It's been, you know, every year it's the points are really not fair and it comes down to the last race and there's not a race series that everyone thinks this is the best and this year this was, you know, I'm not saying that because I won, but you can ask any pro, you know, they'll tell you this series is like the most prestigious, you know. I mean, there's TV coverage, there's money and it's just, aside from, from all the pros saying it's the best, that's just, that confirms it right there, you know. Well, you know something? I want to thank you for that because the sincerity that, that you deliver is something that means a lot to, to myself, my wife, Kids Network, Great. all of us. And your brother-in-law took second. <laughs> you know, wait a minute, time out. <laughs> David, I think we ought to do something about this. Okay. His brother-in-law takes second. He wins. His wife has a baby. The team trophy comes. I mean, this is ridiculous. The guy's got everything. Congratulations. Thank you very much. The best man won, Thanks. without a doubt. Thank you. All right, well, Granny, if you don't mind, I think Greg's in an appointment at the hospital, as his wife is in labor. Yeah. You've got the car right here, Greg. You just want to jump on in and get on the road. Cool. Not a better time in the world to win your own car, all right? <laughs> Greg Hill, our 1983 overall winner for the BMX Pro Spectacular Series. <laughs> he says, maybe I'll go to Vegas in it. <laughs> Bye, BMXers. See you next time.